Carbohydrates represent a paradox in our lives. No one can live and function properly without them, yet most people try to avoid them like a plague. But not all carbs are bad. However, the secret is in striking a balance to ensure you keep your carb intake as healthy and just low enough to get you going. But what exactly is a low-carb diet? Welcome to Simplified Health Tips. Your place for factual information about achieving and maintaining optimal health. I'm Andrew. Today Michael and I will be covering everything you need to know about the low-carb diet. So, tap the like button, smash that subscribe button and let's go. First up Michael. What is the low-carb diet? Low-carb diet is a restriction on daily intake of foods high in carbohydrate like grains, pasta or bread. Carb intake is highly restricted and reduced and then because the body converts carbs to energy, it is replaced with food high in protein and fat content. Examples are meat, cheese, fish, shellfish, poultry, eggs and nuts or seeds. High carbohydrate foods can also be replaced with foods low in carbohydrates like kale, spinach collard, chard or any other vegetable with high fiber content. What constitutes a low carb diet is, however, not standard as it depends on individual needs. There are many variations in what people consider a low percentage of carb intake. The American Academy of Family Physicians defined a low-carb diet as an intake of less than 20% carbohydrate content. But this is not a standard even though some low-carb dieters go by this rule. Low-carb diet generally varies from person to person. In terms of grams, a low-carb diet is usually within the range of 20 to 60 grams carbohydrate content per day, according to the Academy of Family Physicians. This is the same as less than 20% daily intake. Some other bodies involved in diet and nutritional health classified low-carb diet as 50 grams of carbohydrate intake in a day. In the long run, the amount of carbs you ingest does not matter as much as the quality of the carbs you eat. There are high-fiber, slow-digesting carbs that are considered very healthy while the sugary and highly refined carbs are generally considered less healthy. Please expound on some of the benefits of the low-carb diet. The benefits of adopting a low-carb diet are a bit controversial among nutritionists. Some physicians believe that it is responsible for increased cholesterol levels. This is because of the replacement of carbs with high fat content food, which eventually leads to heart complications. Some others believe that the weight loss benefits of low carb diet are very short term. Therefore, not worth the entire hullabaloo. There is the belief that there has been a high rise in low carb dieting because of the major celebrity endorsements it has garnered over the last few decades. Also, essentially, it is not the amount of carbs we take in but the quality of the carbs. Like I said before, avoid the highly refined and sugary carbs, and embrace the ones with high fiber content that are slow to digest. In all of these controversies there are studies that prove that low-carb diets have their health benefits. Low-carb diet leads to short-term weight loss. A recent study compared the effect of low carbs and low fat as a weight loss regime. Low carbs acted faster and made the participants lose more weight than low fat diet but in the long run low carbs lost its advantage and both low fat and low carbs match the same measurement. It reduces your appetite. Hunger is one of the kickbacks against dieting but low carb dieting makes that different. Reduced carbs have to be replaced with more protein and fat content. And this invariably means you consume much fewer calories and this also makes you feel less hungry. Reduces abdominal fat. Visceral fat is one of the most harmful to us as humans. This is the fat stored around our abdominal regions. A high percentage of overweight people on a low-carb diet lose their harmful abdominal fats that can cause metabolic issues. Reduces triglycerides. Triglycerides are fat molecules present in our bloodstream and, in high levels, they increase our risk of heart disease. Low carbs lead to a dramatic decrease in triglycerides. Increases HDL cholesterol level or good cholesterol. One of the best ways to increase good fat or HDL present in our bloodstream is to increase our fat intake and a low-carb diet triggers an increase in fat intake. Reduces insulin and blood sugar level. Studies have shown that the best way to lower insulin and blood sugar level is to cut your carb intake. It is particularly helpful for people living with diabetes and insulin resistance. Studies have also shown that low-carb diet treats and even goes as far as reversing type 2 diabetes. However, if you are diabetic you will need to talk to your doctor before cutting off your carb. Your medication will have to be adjusted to prevent hypoglycemia. It may lower blood pressure. Low-carb diet has the potential to substantially reduce blood pressure which subsequently ensures the prevention of hypertension-related diseases. Acts as a form of treatment, or therapy for some brain disorders like epilepsy. When your body can no longer find sufficient glucose from carbohydrate because of your low-carb diet, 
the body burns ketones instead. Ketones are produced from fats as an energy source for the body instead of glucose from carbs. Ketone bodies are produced as a response during low-carb dieting or starvation. The brain needs glucose. But a large part of the brain can also utilize and burn ketones. A study on epileptic kids placed on ketogenic diet showed that there was more than 50% decrease in their seizure occurrence. And 16% of them became seizure-free. Ketogenic and low-carb diet studies are now being tested on patients with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's diseases. It acts on the bad cholesterol or LDL and improves it. Cutting carbs not only decreases the level of LDL in the blood, but it also increases their mass size making them less harmful to us. Protects against metabolic syndrome, this is a group of symptoms that include low HDL cholesterol level, high blood sugar, abdominal obesity, high blood pressure and high triglycerides. These increase your risk of having diabetes and heart conditions. Low carb dieting is known to treat all five of these symptoms. Thank you. So, are there any risks associated with this diet that we should be aware of? Without sufficient carbohydrate to be broken down into glucose, fat becomes your major supplier of energy source. Your body breaks down fat into ketones. The ketones then become your primary source of fuel or energy for your body, instead of glucose. This puts your body in a state commonly called ketosis. There are risks associated with low-carb dieting and increase in fat and protein content in the body. Kidney problems, if you already have issues with your kidneys, increasing your body protein content will put an extra strain on them and this can worsen their function. Osteoporosis, osteoporosis is a disease that causes your bones to become extremely porous and invariably becomes subject to fractures. A high protein diet may dispel a high volume of calcium with uric acid and this could lead to osteoporosis. Kidney stones, this is also caused by dispelling a high amount of calcium with urine and as we all know, kidney stones are caused when our urine contains more crystal forming substances like calcium, uric acid or oxalate, than the fluid contained, usually more than the urine can dissolve. High cholesterol level, foods like whole dairy products, fatty meat parts and some other high fat foods can increase your cholesterol levels. Who is the low carb diet recommended for? You should embark on or start a low carb diet if you have brain seizures or suffer from epilepsy, have a high LDL blood content, have high triglycerides in their blood, have low HDL in their blood, suffer from type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance want short-term immediate results with weight loss if you want a long-term weight loss plan regimen can also embark on a low-carb diet if you want to increase their lean protein intake a low-carb diet is also a great way to increase your fruits fiber nuts seeds and fat intake have metabolic symptoms like high blood sugar and abdominal obesity want to go on a diet but also want to suppress your cravings and appetite there are various reasons to start a low-carb diet, and it is open to almost everyone, but if you have any pre-existing conditions or are under any medication, please inform your doctor before cutting off carbohydrates. This is especially important for people on diabetic medications to prevent hyperglycemia. Who should not embark on a low-carb diet? Low-carb diet is not for everyone. You should avoid it if you have the following. Kidney problems as decreasing your carb intake will make you increase protein and fat intake and the extra or excess protein will put an added strain on your kidneys functions. Kidney stone. High protein content leads to excreting high volume of calcium with urine, which can cause kidney stones. Heart conditions. If you already suffer from heart conditions, you may want to steer clear of low carb diet because it may increase your fat and cholesterol levels. Pre-existing bone conditions. Low carbs may cause osteoporosis in some people due to high excretion of calcium in their urine. Vitamin or mineral deficient patients. Subsequently low carbs lead to deficiency in minerals and vitamins. So, if you already do not have enough, you should desist from a low carb diet. Children and teens. They need the high source of energy that carbs provide. I've heard there are some possible side effects. Please tell us more about those. There are side effects to be expected from cutting off the major source of energy in our body. Bad breath. Headaches. Weakness and lethargy. Skin rash. Constipation and diarrhea. Muscle cramps and. Fatigue. These are some side effects of the dip in glucose supply and the extra fat and protein storage in our bodies. In order to lead a healthy and long-term low-carb dieting lifestyle there are healthy proteins and unsaturated and trans fat you can invest in. These will ensure your glucose level just stays high enough to produce the energy you need and keep you going. 
Thank you again Michael for helping our viewers better understand the low carb diet. To our viewers. Don't forget to like and share this video with your loved ones. You may just be saving a life. You can also drop your comments and questions, and we will certainly get back to you. See you next time. Thank you for watching to the end of our video. If you found the information helpful, please like the video. Also, don't forget to join the family by subscribing to our channel. See you next time.